Thanks for joining us. Let's get started. Residents of Amamfrom in the Gansa district are asking the police to cordon off the scene of the gas explosion which occurred on Tuesday. Two people were killed and another person seriously injured in the blast. Let's get on the phone lines now and speak to Derek Echo Sam who is at the scene for Joy News. Echo, what's the latest from where you are? Well, Francesca, the place is yet to be cordoned off and you could see people trooping in from across the area, from around the area to see when exactly happened, especially people who have just heard about the news. You know, when it happened around 1 p.m. yesterday, not everybody was aware of what happened. There were others who saw it in the news. And so, as I speak to you now, if you look at the scene of the accident, you realize that people are coming in, and it's not a pleasant time to people, especially for the residents who live just around the area of the accident. Echo, and we know that uh, some residents have been trooping there to uh, have a glimpse of what we understand is a body part lying there. Is that still there? Is the body part still there? Yes, it's still there. The police is yet to come for the body part. And um, it's, it's, it's the leg of one of the deceased. And people also in the neighborhood have also gone to that side of the vicinity to have a look at it. Now, the residents are telling me they want the police to cordon off the area because once they move out of their homes, the first thing they see is the accident scene, and for them, a turn shivers down their spine. They are actually frightened, and they would want the place to call him up, especially as it has become a scene where he, most people come there to see the So they tell me they don't feel safe going out of their home um, into the neighborhood because once they move out, it's the accident scene. We can now listen to some of them. Okay, Echo, we cannot listen to that right now, but um, what about uh, the two who, who were blasted and died, and also the injured person? Do we know what's going to happen? Have we heard from their families? Well, um, I've been speaking to the family of one of the deceased, which uh, yeah, they are still in the meeting, still contemplating when to go for the party from the police mob and then bury him. Um, I also understand the other person is Kofi. He also leaves just not, he lives not too far away from the place, but I'm yet to get to the family of that particular disease. The other person was also in there, I understand, is also in the hospital, also receiving treatment. I understand he's responding to treatment as well. Okay, that's Derek Echo Sam. Thank you very much reporting for Joy News um, about the explosion. We got the latest from him on that. Meanwhile, the Ghana Cylinder Manufacturing Company uh, has been speaking about that and we'll try and uh, get them and bring you what they're saying later. Now, the Accra Metropolitan Assembly is stopping at nothing in its quest to rid the city of illegal structures. The Assembly on Tuesday pulled down hundreds of structures sited under high-tension cables in Aigbe Town. Ridwan Karim Dini Osman has more on the following report. Some Aigbe town residents looked on helplessly as the bulldozer destroyed what was one of their places of abode. Others struggled to salvage what they could from the debris. Hundreds were left homeless in the exercise supervised by city authorities and armed police. According to residents, the demolition was carried out after the expiration of a 14-day notice issued by the AMA. The structures destroyed were mostly wooden shacks situated near or directly below high-tension transmission cables and poles. Those affected said the notice by the AMA was not done with a human face. When I reach uh, a work, you know, I, I, I saw my phone is ring. I, I picked my call. He said, uh, this thing, what does that? And this thing, I scatter my kiosk. I don't have any money to buy anything. That, that is the police dead there. And this money, this beat my only mother. He beat my only mother too because of kiosks. We can't destroy it. We, we are not animals. We are not animals. We are all human beings. We are all Ghanaians. Some of the, the, the Liberians, the refugees, they come, they find a place them to sleep. What about we Ghanaians? Some residents are also demanding compensation for their property destroyed. For now, nobody have money. We can't. We don't have money to go and rent. To go and rent a, a house somewhere, or to go and buy a house somewhere. We don't have money, so we don't know what to. And, okay, if I have money, I'll go my own time. I don't have money to go. I don't have money to go now, right now. Ah, why? You see, she, she says that you you come to write the, the name to give him money to go. 
your uh, my hunter. But up to now, you not give it ten pesos. You not give it. You, this money I give my uh, I do a good worker. You, uh, uh, people can here to scatter all these things. See, see here, see here. Nobody see, see, see this children. Three, three, two days old. This children, two days. How can? How can? A resident who couldn't hide her anger demanded answers from authorities. Under government land, if it's government land, who are the government? Me and you, we are government. We are government. So what do you, what do you intend to do now? Why do you take my land, my land, and give it to who? We will be here. We are going to be here because the land belongs to us. We are not refugees. Even in Syria, when they had problems, they gave them land outside. And they went into a certain country, the nearest distance. They gave them Tapolin and this. My own land, my own country. I become, uh, even you are not providing. You have money. You have money to buy diesel, to fuel cars, to come and break down poor people. You don't have money to pay uh, 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 doctors. You don't have money to pay nurses. Uh, uh, this, uh, uh, the uh, psychotic world, the mad, the mad people are in town. They are in town. You see, there are serious matters that the government or AMA should think of, not this. The AMA's decongestion exercise has already dealt with areas around Graphic Road, Aveno, Circle, Kukumlimli, and Old Fadama. Redwan Karim Dini Osman, Joy News, Accra. Meanwhile, the Railway Development Authority thinks the ongoing demolition exercise should have been done much earlier. Abubakar Sadiq is the CEO of the Ghana Railway Development Authority. He spoke to Mamavio Uswabwaje on the AM show. It's not acceptable to provide crossings to private houses across the rail network. What is happening here is that there is a railway reservation within which no settlement is allowed. Because if you provide those settlements, they don't form part of the general planning of that vicinity mm. from the city authorities. So they are not accessible by road. They are not provided with any means of disposal of waste. They, they are not provided with anything because it's not supposed to be part of the plan of the vicinity from the city authorities. So why then do we see houses? That's the point. Indiscipline. Just indiscipline. Is and it indiscipline or some official not doing their work to stop people from building? Well, uh, you, it could be that, but the person who is also building what does he think he's doing? Well, they because need a place to there, live. There's no access. You don't just get up and say, I want a place to live, so I'm coming to build on the road. You see, what has been done by the AME, that's what should have been done a long time ago. But you realize that even the reactions from public or from other individuals is not encouraging. Currently, we're doing similarly in Takradi. I would like to express our appreciation to the MC of uh, Sekandita Kradi Metropolitan Assembly, Captain Kujo. He's assisted us a lot in demolishing most of these structures. And to be frank with you, what has been done by the mayor of Accra, we are very, very happy about it. We've been visiting him on several occasions, seeking this assistance. We've been to, like I told you earlier, the Lezekuku uh, or MC to assist us demolish some of these structures. In fact, since 2002, since 2002, some, of our, some of our them? projects, pardon? Do you resettle these people? Is it part of the plan? No, no. Anybody who encroached on railway land will not be resettled. We've been warning people day in, day out, every day. We've written on all the structures on daily basis that is not allowed. It creates a problem for us. Nurses at the Accra Psychiatric Hospital have suspended their sit-down strike after government assured them full payment of the outstanding salary arrears by end of September. Joy News earlier uh, spoke to one psychiatric nurse. Uh, he's also the leader of the striking nurses, Emmanuel Fabry. He said that they have been assured by government. Um, I can talk to you right now. What happened is um, Honorable Haruna Idrusu came over um, to talk to us upon listening to the issues and everything. And we actually made him aware that we passed the documentation 
we passed the verbal date. So we wanted something on paper mm. to show that the money could be paid. So he actually agreed with us that the money should be paid by ending of September. And looking at the way we care about our patients, we wanted to resume back so we can um, see to this innocent patient, which is not fault of DS, as a result of real suffering. Mm. Now, it's not the first time you're be being given an assurance as this. How confident? Can you come again? I'm, I'm saying that it's not the first time you have been given an assurance as what what you were you were told yesterday. How confident are you of this one, which perhaps may have triggered your decision to resume work today? Exactly. So this is not the first time we've been given such an assurance, and even from all indications, we should have been gotten here if. The Minister of Health has actually acted and um, done what he was supposed to do. My colleague Michaela Anderson was at the psychiatric hospital and spoke to some of the nurses who are back to work this morning. It's a day after nurses here at the Accra Psychiatric Hospital called off their one-day-old strike over government's failure to pay salary arrears owed them. Currently, the nurses are working. They are attending to patients. But why have the nurses called off their strike? Is it that they are happy with the assurance from the Labour Minister that they would be paid by the end of September? Well, I'm here to speak to some of them. We've called off the strike in view of the fact that yesterday we had to sit down with the Minister of Works and Labour Relations and um, he laid down a roadmap for us to follow. And we, we very much agree to the fact that he is going to fulfill his promises. What, what makes this particular assurance from government different from the previous ones? Because I remember I was here last year to report on this same issue. What makes it different is that this time around he had to come over to us and speak to us. And um, some of our colleagues even had to follow him to the finance ministry to see what was being done to resolve this whole uh, issue of salary areas. We were able to agree that by ending of this month, September, the payment will start. And then by, septem uh, by September ending, everybody will get paid. If government breaches their commitments, then we are going to resume the strike. For the love we have for our patients, we are ready to work till September. Yeah. We all know September is just at the corner. We are just waiting till the end of September. So if nothing happens, then we see the way forward. The assurance they gave us was not just about work. We had to go to the audit service to see for ourselves that our names are being put into, onto the machine. So we are hoping by September their promise will be fulfilled. Okay, so you heard it all from the nurses. They are confident that government would pay them by the end of September. September and perhaps because of the love they have for their patients and they are not happy that mentally challenged people are dotted all over the country they've decided to call off the strike Michaela Anderson for Joy News President Mahama is expected to open a section of the Kwame Nkrumah interchange at Sekel uh, on Friday. The road opening is expected to ease traffic following the congestion caused by the construction works there. The project, which started two years ago, has forced a number of diversions and relocations, also brought a lot of inconvenience to con uh, commuters. Joy News' Latifi Dries, who visited the construction site, says commuters are eagerly anticipating the opening. If everything goes on as planned, President John Dramani Mahama will visit here on Friday the construction site for the three-tier $100 million project at the Kwame Nkrumah Circle. Now, this project, when completed, President Mahama, in his word, says, will be a tourist site and will also serve its primary purpose of reducing the heavy traffic that has characterized the national capital. Now, ahead of his visit, I'm here to look at how the whole project is shaping up and what motorists and pedestrians have been saying and their expectations ahead of President's visit and what they expect to see when the project is finally concluded. I think when they are done, this is going to, going to modernize the city. Uh, things are going to be better because I'm seeing all the overheads and I think congestion will go down. Problem is though, will the people understand why this is being done? Will, will, shall we still be having um, these guys selling stuff? Because they are part of the problem, you know. 
because uh, you're trying to avoid the, the pedestrians and the, those selling. But other than that, when this is done, this will be a, it's more or less like a world-class city. How is the practice back in the United States where, where you've lived for a very long time? We respect the laws. Here, the problem is nobody respects the law. Magnificent edifice. Well, the con 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 contractors, uh, Curot Gavaru, they are very good and they are very, they are working very marvelously. The way they drill the anti-earthquake prone system, the way they handle their work professionally, the way they take measurement in precision, it's very interesting at sightseeing. So at times, I, during my leisure hours, I come to the site, I look at them over and over, and, uh, and, and it's so much interesting when you're looking at them. The president said when completed, this place will be a tourist site, and you, you are falling for that. Oh, yes, yes. It's, it's Not be, even, uh, even before the work is completed? Yes, it's a very wonderful work, and the contractors are doing a very magnificent work. They are doing a very wonderful job. The workers who are taking shelter under the uh, overpass, it's, it's, it's a big of, of a problem. Don't it's think? a problem, but it's up to the government to deploy some tax force. The tax force is working, but the hawkers are also... They have to do their work effectively to get them out from the areas. Welcome back. Police have arrested a man at Oyarifa for allegedly defiling a 40-year-old girl who worked as a house help for his family. The girl says Alex Akrofi had sex with her on numerous occasions, resulting in complications in her stomach. You will remember yesterday we brought you a similar story about an 18-year-old girl whose father had been defiling her since she was 12 years. Well, today's story about the man defiling her, his house help, Joseph Opokugakbo has been speaking to the girl. She says she got pregnant by this man and he later made her have an abortion. Joseph Opokugakbo joins us in the studio. Welcome to you and thanks for joining us, Joseph. Good afternoon. Welcome. Yes. How did all of this start? Okay, so this girl was brought in sometime last year by the family. Uh, to come help take care of their two little children. And so uh, she came in, she attends school, she's actually in class four at the moment, and so she helps to take care of the kids, and then she attends school herself uh, here in Accra. And so uh, she, she, she explains that sometime last year, the mother of the house traveled all the way to uh, the United States, we are told, and so uh, since she traveled, uh, the man constantly asks her for sex before then he gives her money to go pay for studies fees in class and again she's alleging that uh, when it comes to even food that she needs to eat the man usually demands she would have her. to give sex before she'll get money uh, before she'll get food exactly otherwise then the, the man really maltreats her if, if she doesn't give in to the sexual activity and and, and so uh, it, it's even resulted in situations where on some occasions she went to school, she did not have money to pay for the study fees, and so the, the, her teachers were raising questions about why uh, she couldn't pay for that. She had to be sent home at one point in time. And there are occasions when she needs to get to other neighbors in order to get food to eat because of how the man has been treating her. So it's been about a year. Why did she report this time around? Uh, well, the explanation she gives is that uh, she's been reporting to others on, on previous occasions. So in, in one of the instances, for example, uh, when, I, when I spoke to her, she tells me uh, she actually told a neighbor about why she needed food from her instead of food at home. The neighbor raised questions about why she has left home and come to her asking for food. And she explained to this neighbor why the man has actually been putting her through. So even in the neighborhood, it, it's more of an open secret. So you know, people Until eventually they reported to the exactly. police. So in, in, in that particular contest, when she actually reported to the neighbor, uh, the, the neighbor asked her questions about you know, how it's been and her menstrual cycle and, and all other questions. The neighbor suspected this issue of pregnancy. The neighbor, according to her, got a pregnancy test, got her to uh, urinate and help with the test. And then the neighbor then got the impression that she may be pregnant. Uh, the neighbor indicated to her that she would inform the dad about it, about her pregnancy. And so... Which she, which did, she did, and they got her to have an abortion. Exactly. According How did that the, happen? According to the girl, uh, she, she wasn't getting her menstrual cycle on a monthly basis. Her period. Exactly. And so um, she, 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 the, the dad gave her certain drugs, 
Uh, she said that there are white tablets, some of which was given to her to swallow. Uh, some were also given to her to insert into her private part. And after some time, then she began getting her period again, uh, indicating that possibly it may have been a case of uh, an aborted pregnancy that happened after the pregnancy was detected. And so uh, beyond that, she reported the case even to her teachers in school. Uh, who also raised questions about it and that's a that's a lot for a young girl of 14 years to go through yes. you've been interacting with her tell us her demeanor how does she feel about all of this uh, she, 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 she complains for example about having repeated tummy upsets she she is linking it to what she's been through with 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 with, with the man in question um, this is a very calm girl um, very timid having an interview with her uh, she could hardly really have a long conversation with you you know she, she, she's she very shy speak up. She, she couldn't speak up the, the audio that i brought showed it all that you know she, she could hardly uh, raise her voice and all of that uh, very calm uh, even in school the, the testimony that i get is that equally she, she's a very calm girl uh, very good in class uh, but she, she really doesn't interact and all of that with some of uh, a lot of her colleagues in class which th then remains an issue that the teachers are again concerned about. Well, thankfully, the man in question has been arrested. We'll see how that pans out. But thank you very much, Joseph Opoku Gapo, for joining us. Now, President John Mahama has urged Ghanaians from all walks of life to contribute to the drawing up of a new 40-year development plan launched by the National Development Planning Commission. Delivering the keynote address to signify commencement of work for the plan, President Mahama expressed optimism the results will reflect the aspirations of Ghanaians. President Mahama said... Massive participation in the consultation exercise will give it a true sense of the future of the country. With the launch of this process, we commit to taking a critical look back to our record of national development, drawing important lessons from our achievements and our challenges alike. It is a process that should afford us the opportunity to have honest and open discussions of our aspirations as a people and what we need to do to realize these aspirations. As a nation, we have prepared and implemented various development initiatives over many years across many governments. Our national development agendas have often reflected short-term development priorities that tended to change from one regime to another. The process we're embarking on will yield fruitful insights and results. We're starting on a good footing by bringing together under one roof people from all walks of life and from all across the political spectrum, from different geographical, ideological, and academic domains and disciplines. Each and every one of us has something con to contribute to the process by sharing our experiences, our aspirations, our resolve, and our commitment. At the end of the process, when we have all played our parts, we can be sure of our collective ownership of the outcome documents. President Mahama further urged them to, among other things, capture development plans to help strengthen institutions in the country. Meanwhile, Chairman of the National Development Planning Commission uh, has blamed the country's slow pace of growth on the failure of successive governments in implementing long-term plans in the ultimate interest of the country. According to Professor Kwesiboche, Ghana was once considered to be on a similar level as South Korea and Malaysia, and yet, while those countries have grown to become economic superpowers, Ghana has stumbled massively. Likening Ghana's development and advancement to Korea, Malaysia and Taiwan, and other economic superpowers of Asia, just after independence, Professor Boche said Ghana has lagged behind because of its failure to implement long-term development plans. He stated, developing and implementing a longer-term plan is the key to Ghana's success. Ghana has lagged behind, while these other countries have flourished and achieved high-income growth. Now, although the causes of this rather stark contrast are more complex than are often acknowledged, it is clear that the basic reason, one basic reason for it, for this contrast, 
is the fact that these countries did implement successive national development plans with a certain degree of consistency. The TUC, represented by its General Secretary, reiterated its long-held position that Ghana should shift from the free market ideology to an all-inclusive policy-based participation. For him, this will allay the fears of the Ghanaian workforce. To be the need to shift from the free market ideology to a more social friendly economic and social policies which centralizes employment as a key driver of social economic development. We also see the need to recognize and support the family as the basic unit of society through social security and social protection measures, the need for an inclusive participatory and consultative approach to national de decision making. Journalists are described as the fourth realm of the state. On this occasion, they were also represented. For the GJA, the vision for the next 40 years is a well-paid and well-informed journalist in the country and also well-sanitized airwaves. It is their hope that the plan, when completed, will be implemented. Manolante, for Joy News, Accra. Meanwhile, former government statistician Dr. Grace Bediako, also a consultant for the National Development Planning Commission, has debunked suggestions that the NDPC lacks the autonomy to implement a long-term national development plan. Dr. Bediako said although political intrusion has been a challenge for the commission over the years, the NDPC is now a different entity poised to see to the implementation of the long-term development plan for Ghana. Let me say, Dr. Entry, the answer should be excited with all of us because some of the things, issues he's raising are now being tackled. You and know? that's why right. there are people like yourself on board. Exactly. The other thing is that you, um, National Development Planning Commission has first the Secretariat and that is the technocrats and then we have the Commission the commissioners and these are experts um, a mix of experts they're not politicians. regional representatives some uh, ministers and then so it's it's a, mix. it's a mix and and they have their term they serve but um, four year term it can be renewed it can be extended so we we have two parts mm -hmm. and i think that um there's a history and probably which is why it's Danson, making yes. references. But things have changed in the last it's even more than 10 years. You're watching News Today on Joy News on Multi TV with me, Francisca Kakra Fossil. We'll take a quick break and business will follow. <laughs> Welcome back. Time now for the business news. Aggrieved workers of the Agricultural Development Bank have filed a motion to step up efforts on putting a hold on the sale of shares of the bank. The workers have been at loggerheads with management over a number of issues, including the sale of the parts of the bank. Last week, both parties were in court after the workers secured an interlocutory injunction on, at the High Court on the flotation of the bank's shares. But even before the High Court could rule on the case, Case as tomorrow, a motion has been served the bank. Well, that's not all. The Professional and Managerial Staff Union of the bank has also released a statement questioning the continuous stay of the management, managing director Stephen Poggi in office even after the expiration of his tenure in July. To other stories, business confidence has increased marginally in the second quarter of the year, recording 87.9 points up from the 85 points recorded in the first quarter. The Association of Ghana Industries, however, describes the increase as insignificant, explaining that the level is still below the base index of 100 points. Chief Executive of the, the Association, Seth Chumakwabwa, however, says the current business environment does not encourage investment. 
According to the Association of Ghana Industries Quarter 2 Barometer Report, the challenges of Ghanaian businesses still persist. Companies, according to the report, are still reeling under the pressure of the volatility of the exchange rates, erratic power supply, multiplicity of tax, access to credits, and the high cost of credit. Confidence level, according to the group, is still low. The report also captured the unstable level of the city and its impact on businesses. President of AGI, James Asareje, is calling on government to, as a matter of urgency, find a permanent solution to the volatile nature of the city, describing it as headache for most businesses. I remember close to the end of June, uh, the city to dollar by way of exchange rates was about 4.5. Then, within two weeks, the city gains about 25% strength. Now, when we were about to jubilate, because we thought that the city was really gaining some strength, uh, you saw between the last two weeks, the city has depreciated for another 17%. I mean, it's, it's, it's a scenario which I call a seesaw approach, you know, of I mean, uh, I mean, handling our city. The association reminds the Bank of Ghana, and for that matter, government, of the need for macroeconomic stability, and therefore calls for immediate institution of measures to stabilize the city, to save businesses from imminent collapse, and help boost business confidence in the economy. The report sampled 500 companies across the country and covered all sectors of the economy, whether small, medium, and large companies. Meanwhile, the AGI is calling on government to create an economic environment where businesses can confidently price in CDs instead of dollars. Chief Executive of the Association, Seth Truma Kwaboa, tells Joy Business, businesses in the face of current exchange rates will continue to price in dollars in order to stay in business. Ask that we need to have stability because if you don't have stability, no matter how strong the cane you use to whip people to the line, if you don't have stability, people compliance becomes very difficult and challenging. The reason being that if I, I have sold my goods and I've priced it in cities as prescribed by law, as, 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 as prescribed by the directive of Bank of Ghana, and then in three months time when I'm getting my supplies back, my, my creditors are going to pay me, and the city has depreciated, it means that the amount of money I'm getting for whatever goods are sold, I'm getting less of it. What happens to me? I'm making losses. So compliance is also determined by being able to achieve stability. That's the point we are making. So it's actually a major, major determinant for compliance. That's it for business. Coming up next is sports. Good afternoon, my name is Baba Tando. Let's talk sports. Now, the GFA uh, last month had an interim injunction placed on it uh, by an Accra Fast Track High Court. Now, um, this was uh, to stop the presidential election, which was slated for 18th of August in Tamale. One Justice Mustafa logo issued the injunction after receiving an ex party motion filed by one lawyer, Bright, to restrain the Ghana Football Association from holding the presidential election. The GFA earlier today challenged the legal basis for the injunction in court. My colleague Benedict Ousu was in court and he joins me here in the studio. Good afternoon to you, Benedict. Yes, good afternoon, Baba. So what happened in court today? Your first time in the court? <laughs> <laughs> what happened actually was that, you know, the Football Association were seeking for the motion against their election to be squashed. So what happened was the, the plaintiff, that's uh, Richard Quaison, who also wanted to stand for the election, what he did was that he, he actually sought the injunction to prevent the election from going ahead on the 18th of, uh, 17th actually of August of this month. So the, the presiding judge today, that's uh, Judge Betu, has set next week Friday as the ruling date for the case. So what happened next week Friday is that we'll get to know whether the election will go ahead on 17th of August or... Uh, the, the election will not go ahead as uh, the, the plaintiff that's a uh, question is seeking. 
Okay, so if question does win this motion, does it mean that um, the other people, the other contestants, or the other uh, candidates who are vying for the presidential election can uh, re, you know, apply and start the process all over again? I'm well, talking about Kofi Ramatu and the others. The thing is, he's not even seeking for that. What he wants to be done is, you know, in times past, the football associations elections, uh, I remember in 2006, mm -hmm. we held that of the constituent bodies for the RFPs and also the uh, the executives before the uh, the presidency. Mm -hmm. And this time, that was in before Mr. Nyantichi was uh, came into office as for his second term. What happened was that the election was held. The first one was held for that of the presidency before we did the constituent bodies and the RFPs. And uh, for Kwesim, he was uh, he wo he was looking for it. But the same thing that was done last uh, in 2006 to be done this time. But what the GFA said was that in their statutes, they can go ahead with the presidency before the constituent bodies or okay. even with, with the executive's election. But for question, obviously, maybe he didn't really know, but the case is in court. So courts will decide what will happen. When the judge says next week there will be a ruling for us to know what exactly will happen, whether okay. the elections will be held on the said date, which is the 17th of August, or something else will happen. Okay, briefly, how was the experience for you since it was your first time in court? Well, it was nice. I really enjoyed it. I see. All right, so, Benedict, you're still coming with me. We have the Premier League to talk about. Um, that's the first Capital Plus Premier League. All right, so you join me here, so we do uh, this together. Um, of course, we know that the first Capital Plus Premier League would actually enter week 26 today, and so there will be fixtures all across uh, eight league centers uh, in the country. But I know that the match of interest will be the one in Dan Soman, certainly between Hard to Folk and uh, Liberty Professionals, because uh, you know Hard to Folk are sitting yes. deep in relegation. Um, do you expect any positive results from well, that? Obviously, game? anything short of victory for our Hard to Folk will see them drop further down the league table. Now they are 15th with 29 points, and the team that occupies the 14th position has got 30 points. So it's just the point separating themselves and Hard to Folk, and they must go all out and win. And Liberty Professionals, you know, at their home, they've never lost any game this season at the Danceman Karindov Park and I'm sure they wouldn't want Hard to Folk to break that record. So Liberty also, they find themselves in a very critical position on the league table so they would want to go all out and win that game as well. So it promises to be a good game at the Danceman Park but I think Hearts will go in as favourites uh, considering the pressure on them in their last three games they've not won a game. Their last game against Asante Kotoko at the Accra Sports Stadium which they lost by two goals to one. So obviously they'll go in as favourites especially when They've appointed a Turkish uh, coach, coach to yeah. assist uh, Eddie Ansan. Mm. You know, five matches to go and where they find themselves is a must win for her. Very to dangerous. And Kumasi Asante Kotoko will be at home to War All Stars this afternoon. Briefly, positive result for Kotoko? They've won their last two games and they would want to preserve that fine run. So I, I would think that ha Kumasi Asante Kotoko will want to go all out and win against All Stars who, in their last two games, have not really played well. All right. So in other matches, uh, Olympics are up against Brecum Chelsea. Mediama FC are at home to Wafa United. Uh, Wafa and um, the team United take on Ash Gold. Uh, New Edibiasi United are up against Inter Allies at the Pando Park. It's Hearts of Lions up against BA United. And wrapping up the fixtures for this afternoon is the Gianna Stars up against. Secondly, Hazakes. Remember that later today is the third place match for the 2015 Audi Cup, as well as the final. The third place match will be between AC Milan and Tottenham Hotspur, and then the final will be between um, the host as Bayern München and Real Madrid. We'll bring you details in our subsequent bulletins. My name is Baba Tando. Sports is done. It's now time for some international news. The hunter who led the expedition when a U.S. dentist killed a lion in Zimbabwe says the man did nothing wrong, describing him as a good man. Theo Bronkhorst made the remarks after his trial, for uh, his trial for failing to prevent a legal hunt was postponed. He said the case was crazy and the permits uh, to kill Cecil the lion uh, were gone. The killing happened in July and it caused outrage around the world and the dentist Walter Palmer is in hiding. Mr. Palmer is believed to have paid about $50,000 to hunt down Cecil at Zimbabwe's largest game reserve.
And that's all for entertainment. And that's how we draw the curtains on news today. Before we go, a quick look at our headlines. 14-year-old girl working as a house help for family in Oyarifa defiled and forced to have an abortion by the man of the house. Also, a day after a gas explosion at Kaswa, residents trooped to the scene of the accident to have a glimpse of a body part from the explosion. And you heard Derek Akosam saying the police are yet to cordon off the area. We also heard about the psychiatric nurses. They have returned to work after calling off their strike. That's it for the bulletin. You can go to myjoyonline.com for more news. I'm Francisca Kakrafos and thanks for your company.